This is the frequency table that we created in the last bit there. And what we're going to do is we're going to pretend we don't have the raw data that underlines this table. We're just stuck with it. And this is often the case as you're reading a government report or a private business report. The data itself is either sensitive, is private, or is just proprietary. They spent a lot of money to get it. And in this case here, all we have is the frequency table. Now often, okay, you'll get a frequency table and they'll also tell you, hey, our mean is this, our median, our standard deviation. Great, you have all the information you need. But just as often, they don't. And when they don't, what we need to do, we would be saying, okay, cool, nice table, but where is the central tendency of this data? What's our mean? What's our median? How is this data dispersed? What is our standard deviation? We still need to find this kind of information out. But we have the tool to do it. It's not ideal. We'd always like to deal with our raw data if all possible, but we could use our grouped statistics in order to calculate it. So three group statistics altogether. We're going to have the grouped mean, the grouped median, and our grouped variance and standard deviation. Let's start off by taking a look at our grouped mean. So X bar subscript G for grouped. And we can find this by taking our frequency times the midpoint all over. Oh, let me back up. That was a mistake there. We can find it by getting the summation of our frequency times the midpoint all over the summation of frequencies. So frequency, okay, here we have the frequency of each class. Midpoint, well, midpoint is going to be the middle value of each class. So sometimes it's quite clear as to what it is. Other times we might have to calculate that. And we can calculate the midpoint as the lower limit of, I'm just going to go i plus 1, plus the lower limit of i. And we're going to divide all that by 2. So if we want to take a look at our first class midpoint, right, let's this out. Midpoint, we need to know that for all three of our classes. Well, midpoint 1 is going to be lower limit of i plus 1, so lower limit of 2. So that's going to be 155 plus lower limit of 1, 125 there all over 2. And so what does that give us? 140. And we can carry on in very much the same way. We can work out uh, midpoint 2 as lower limit 3 plus lower limit 2 all over 2. So we'd have 185 plus 1 all over 2 would give me a midpoint of 170 and what we would should yeah, what we should see with our midpoints is just as our classes are going up in groups of 30 our midpoints will be going up in groups of 30 140 to 170 and then 170 i don't even need to once i get the pattern right we can just expand that out and i'd have 200 for my if that wasn't clear you're like oh but keith there's Lower limit of the next class. No, in this case, we just have to do 185 to 215 by plus 215 and then divide that guy. Okay, now the next step is let's create a new column. In our numerator here, well, we're not looking for f, we're not looking for m, we're looking for f times m. So we need to have f m as our next column. And all we're going to be doing in this case here is going the frequency times 1 times 140. That's not too bad. 140. 2 times 170. Well, 2 times 170, that's going to give us 40. And then 2 times 200, that will give us 400. What we're looking for in our numerator is the summation of f times m. So let's sum this. 400 and 340, that's going to be 740, 840, 880. So we would have 880 being our 
combination of frequency midpoint. The last thing we want to take a look at is, okay, this guy divided by the summation of our frequencies. We already have that summation of our frequencies, five. So we can work out, okay, our grouped in this case here is going to be 880 divided by five, which gives me divided by 170. So I would have a grouped mean, my estimate of the true mean being at 170. If we want to compare this, if we take a look back at our last video, we can recall that when we had all the raw data, we calculated a mean of 178. So in this case here, we see that our grouped mean, well, it's not an exact estimate, right? We're dealing with very limited data points here, but we see that it's, it's not too terrible, right? It gave us the idea as to where the mean would be. Again, keep in mind, grouped mean, this guy here, this is as we calculated from the previous example where we had the full set of data. Okay, let's go and take a look at our other descriptive statistics we can use from group data. Let's move on to take a look at our variance and standard deviation. For our grouped variance, we're gonna use a new formula. All right, we took a look at the formula for the grouped mean. In this case, we're gonna be taking a look at the formula for the grouped variance. And what this guy is going to be is the summation of our frequencies times midpoint minus x bar. And keep in mind this will be our grouped mean squared all over n minus 1. So okay, if we think about this, if we want to compare and contrast this formula to our normal variance formula, Summation of x minus x bar squared all over n minus 1. What's, what's our differences here? Well, okay, we're both looking at how far we are from the mean. Differences in our normal standard deviation, we have, hey, we have our actual observations of x. So we can actually take each observation of x and subtract it by r. In this case, we don't. We have just our best guess of what x could be, which is the midpoint of each bin. All right, so keep in mind, if we take a look at our second bin here, 155 to 185, we have two observations. We don't know where these two observations fall in this bin. They might be both at 184, they might be one at 157 and one at 180. All right, we're not sure where these observations are, we just know there's two within that span. So what should we use as our estimate as to where these observations could be? Well, we might as well use the midpoint, right? We might as well use the midpoint. It's not perfect, but well, what other point should we use? So we update our observations of X with the midpoint class. Then to take into account the fact that we have two observations in there, well, we're gonna take this whole squared deviation from the mean, and say, hey, it happens twice, right? This is our frequency. That was our frequency. Frequency was two times. So we're just going to work through it in that fashion there. A little bit of a difference, but not really. Hopefully, as we'll see, not too bad. Just a few extra steps to work. So to add from this, let's work through calculating our variance and then our standard deviation. What do we need? Well, we have our mean already. We have our midpoint already. Know what our frequency is, and we know what our sample size is. Sample size is five. Okay, so what do we have left to find? Well, we have all the parts, we just need to start putting it together. So in this case here, I'm gonna start off with let's work out what m minus x bar group is. Right? Let's work out what our deviation mean is. So, okay, oh, I have two means going on here. All right, keep in mind that this is my grouped mean. This guy here was just for comparison. This was my mean from that last question when we had the full data set, just so we could see how close we are. But let's get rid of that, just so we don't confuse. So what are we looking at? We're looking at 140 minus 176, and that's gonna give us negative 36. 
170 minus 176, that will give us negative 6. And 200 minus 176, that's going to give me 4. Now, I don't want to do anything with this guy yet, right? Keep in mind, I'm looking for the squared deviations, right? So, next step, let's go midpoint minus x bar grouped squared. Square that. So 36 to the power of 2 is going to be 1296. 6 to the power of 2, that's our 36. And 24 to the power of 2, we have our 5, 6. Now, okay, the tendency that I see a lot here, because we're used to calculating our variance, we're used to calculating our standard deviation, is that we just go, okay, take the summation of this, and boom, that's our numerator. No, 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 no. We have one more step in this case, right? We want the frequency times our squared deviations. from. So we need one more column. We need one more column to truthfully get this. And this column is our frequency times midpoint minus x bar grouped squared. And so what we're going to do in each case here, we're going to take our color that actually shows a bit better. We're going to use our frequency times r squared deviations mean. So 1 times 1296. All right, so if we do that, well, the first guy there, 12, 1296 times 1 is just going to be 6. 36 times 2, that's just going to be 72. And 576 times 2 is going to be 1152. We can work that out then. We can take the summation of this, right? That's what we're doing. Summation of frequency times squared deviations from our group mean. So if we add that up, 1152 plus 72 plus 1296. And we have a summation of 22. Oh, sorry. Not 2520. Okay. That there. That is our numerator. So now we can work out our denominator. Well, that's going to be our sample size minus 1, 5 minus 1. And so we'll have our grouped variance as 520 all over 4. And so that would give me a squared variance, or not squared, a grouped variance of. 630 centimeters square. If I want to go from this to my standard deviation, well, to get my standard deviation, I'm just going to take the square root of it. So I'll take the square root of this guy, square root of 630 gives me my deviation, and that's going to be 25, what do we have? 25.0998 to 25.1 centimeters. I have my grouped, my grouped standard deviation. So to work out our median, the median is probably the most involved out of all of these. Let's throw this one here. Our median is the most involved out of all of these group statistics that we calculate. And that is we will figure out the median as, and you're going to look at this in your eyes, we'll glaze over. Uh, we will have our median of our grouped data set will be L plus summation of our frequency all over 2 minus FC all over FM times I. So, okay, whole bunch of stuff going on there. Looks like a fairly ugly equation. But what is happening? Here? Well, okay. What do we have? We have L. This is going to be our lower limit of the median class. So I'll say that again. L, this is our lower limit of our median Class. FC, 
this is going to be our cumulative frequency up to but excluding the median clock. FM, this is going to be the frequency of the median class. And then finally, I, I is our bin width. And truthfully, this is bin width of our median class. Right, and that is an important distinction to be made. We've been really good at making sure all of our bins are of the same width. You won't always see that. You will from time to time see really bad frequency tables, really bad histograms being done, where every bin is its own unique width. So technically this would be the bin width of the median. And then summation of F over two. Well, okay, that's just gonna be the summation of all of our frequencies over. So right in this case here, summation of our frequencies would be five, five divided by two. There. So, okay, it's easy to get taking a look at this and just being overwhelmed. I've seen this plenty of times where they find the median of this group data set and students just look at this and go, oh my goodness, where do I even start? What is happening? Well, okay, let's give us a good starting point. Our good starting point will notice that this term median class pops up a lot. So, a good starting point is to find that median class. So what, what do we mean by the median class? The median class just the middle class? Well, no, not necessarily. What the median class is, is it's going to be the class in which the median is in. So keep in mind that the median is just our 50th percentile. So what we want to do is we want to find the location of our 50th percentile. So remembering our location formula, that's going to be n plus 1. 5 plus 1 to the 50 over 100, and that will give me a location of 3. So that is my median will be my third observation in an ordered data set. Like, okay, hey, but Keith, we don't have raw data. We don't have an ordered data set. Well, how, how do I even approach this? Well, okay, let's go back up to our table here. Keep in mind what we have here is we do actually have an ordered data set. We have one observation in this group here of 125 up to 155. We then have two observations in this grouping here, right? We're getting bigger. And then we have, well, another two in this last one getting bigger yet. So that is if we want to think about just our observation numbers. This first class has observation one. This next class is going to have observation two and three. Our final class is going to have observation three and sorry. Our last class is going to have observation four and five. Right? And so, okay, we are looking for observation three as our median. Observation three is right there, meaning in our case, yes, the middle bin is our median bin. So we can identify this, right, big, bright, or uh, yellow arrows. We're going to have our median that guy. Okay, now that we have our median bin or our median class, we can actually just start to fill in all of this information. One thing you'll notice that we need as well, though, is our cumulative frequency. So, okay, let's, let's work that guy out quickly before we start doing it. Let's work out our cumulative frequency of x. So, okay, again, keep in mind our cumulative frequency, we're just taking a look at value of the class of interest and all values smaller. First bin, cumulative frequency of 1. Second bin, 1, 2, so that's going to be 3. And then final bin, 2 and 3 is going to be 5. So we have our cumulative frequency. Everything else, what else do we need? Uh, we need bin width. Well, we can figure out the bin width, right? Finding out bin width, well, we know our typical one. We go, hey, i is greater than or equal to our maximum minus our minimum all over k. But uh, we can't really use this. We don't know what k is. 
We don't actually know what our maximum value is, and we don't actually know what our minimum value is. So no, no, that's that, that's not going to fly. Well, how else can we find out our bin width from this? Well, we can work it out instead, as our bin width will be our lower limit of i plus one, and right, this would be our bin width of i. So observation bin i, I guess. Lower limit of i plus one minus the lower limit of i. Subscript i. There we go. Of i. So we would want to look at that. Let's say we're trying to find our bin width. Well, we could go 185, right? That would be our bin 3. Minus 155, that's our bin 2. So all of that would give us our bin width of the second bin. So what does that work out to? Well, that gives us a bin width of 30. So we have our bin width. There we go. I think we now have everything we need. Let's start throwing it into our equation and let's work out what our median is, our grouped. So, okay. Median of our group data set. Starting off, lower limit of the median class. Well, we just read that off the table. 155. Plus summation of our frequencies over 2. So, 5 over 2, that's going to be. 2.5 minus FC, cumulative frequency up to but excluding the median class. So, okay, where is my median class again? Median class was the second one, so my cumulative frequency up to but excluding. Well, that's just so okay, 2.5 minus. We're going to divide all this by the frequency of the median class, which is well, we have two observations in there. Two. And then we're going to times this by our bin width. So let's let's work this through. We're going to have 2.5 minus 1 is going to be 1.5. 1.5 divided by 2 gives me 0 0.75. And then 0 0.75 times 30 is going to give me 22.5. So what do I have here? I have median of my group data set is 155 plus 22.5. So last step, I can add those together. 22.5 plus 155 is going to give me a median of 177.5 centimeters. So we have our median from this here. If we want to compare it to what we calculated as our median from our raw data, keep in mind when we did our raw data, we got a median of 1. 82. Right, so again, we see just like with all of our examples for group data, we're a little bit off. Right, we don't get a perfect estimate. Our raw data is always going to be the better tool to utilize, but we do see that we can get an estimate of our grouped median, and it gives us at least an idea as to where these values. Group data, uh, it's an important one to be able to utilize when we're reading reports, when we're going from reports trying to get what's happening with the data. Outside of D2L and a few little uh, discussion questions, we probably won't see much of the use of the data as we carry on through the course. This should do us for our descriptive statistics for this week. Uh, if you have any questions about this, again, feel free to post on the frequently asked questions. Feel free to send me an email and we can work through this. For good example questions, of course, check that OpenStax textbook. There's lots of resources there.